Welcome to this Sunday service. My name is Lol Wood and it's great to be here with you. I thought I'd begin by offering us some questions to think about. I wonder what rest looks like for you. I wonder what rest looks like for you. This was taken on a retreat that I went to recently. And the thing I noticed was that wherever I went, there were places that you could sit, rest, lie down and observe. I wonder if you also have a particular sit spot that you like to rest in. But I wonder what rest does look like for you. In the passage we're going to hear today, Jesus is encouraging his disciples to step away and rest. Well, that was the plan. So this is part of the passage today. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus and his followers moved from having a moment potentially of rest to seeing a large crowd and they felt compassion. When was the last time you felt compassion for someone else? When was the last time you felt compassion for someone else? And when that happened, what other reactions or responses happened within you. So as you felt compassion for someone else, what other reactions or responses happened within you? That might be on a gut level, in a head level or something else. What other reactions or responses happened within you? I wonder how Jesus felt to be constantly sought and constantly chased. I wonder how Jesus felt to be constantly sought and constantly chased. I wonder too whether he ever felt overwhelmed or perhaps touch sensitive because of people always attempting to edge nearer so they could touch his garments. I wonder too whether he ever felt overwhelmed or touch sensitive because of people always attempting to edge nearer so they could touch his garments. I wonder what the disciples observed in these moments too. I wonder what the disciples observed in these moments too. Please feel free to keep pondering some of these questions as we hear today's reading which is Mark chapter 6 verses 30 to 34 and 53 to 56. The apostles gathered round Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. 
So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognised them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genserat and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognised Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. There are some passages in the Bible that, uh, even though they were written you know, hundreds of years apart and their contexts are very different, if you put them alongside each other, you see similarities. You know, they, they kind of illustrate each other. They, they add something to each other. I think the passage we've just listened to, for me, is one of those. I mean, I suppose it shouldn't really surprise us. It, it says something about you know, God's faithfulness uh, and the things that we can trust about God uh, on our life's journey and our journey of faith. That passage began like this. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. And a, a while ago, Jesus had sent them out in pairs um, to towns, the villages, to preach, to heal. And this is them now coming back, telling him you know, what, what they'd found, what had happened. And then Jesus says, come and get some rest. Because so many people were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. The word rest is an interesting one, um, perhaps not quite what we tend to think of. We tend to think of, you know, kind of perhaps inactivity. Um, but no, this, this word rest there, uh, often used to contrast the burdens that the Pharisees placed on people. And this was about being freed, having weight, uh, weight lifted from you, about fulfilment and harmony and balance. You know, that's what Jesus wanted them to discover and to know, because it's what God wants for us as well, of course. You know, and therefore it's what the followers of Christ pray for the world and seek to bring to the world. That rest, but more than rest, recreation. Perhaps so it's appropriate to, to have these words and to have this reading um, at the start of the summer holidays. The schools here just uh, on Friday were, uh, came to the end of term, the end of the academic year. And we think of, of them, the children, the, the families and the rest that they will now enjoy, hopefully. Or those who come to visit this place, this part of the world, seeking rest. And we, we pray that they may find that, although more than that, recreation, what God longs for them to discover. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Perhaps there are echoes of Genesis and the Sabbath. You know, on the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. But it's part of creation, um, that being recreated. And of course, the Sabbath was one of the sticking points between Jesus and the religious leaders, how they understood the Sabbath, you know, with them saying, no, it, it's, you know, it's stopping everything. But Jesus saying, no, it's about being recreated, about having the life that God longs for us to have. Or perhaps, you know, put those words of Jesus, that invitation to rest alongside Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40. 
Do you not know? Have you not heard? The, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Yeah, it seems you know, Jesus inviting his disciples to come with him to a quiet place and find rest and enjoy rest uh, resonates with what Isaiah was saying there. And there's this pattern in, in today's reading of Jesus knowing what people needed and then seeking to bring it to them, to find the place where they would enjoy that, that rest, because that's God's nature. So they withdrew to a deserted place. But what happens? Uh, people followed them and sought them out. Uh, there was an interruption, if you like, rather like in the, the passage we looked at a few weeks ago. Um, but life is like that. Um, yeah, we have our plans and, and things that we, we have in mind, but then other things come along and interrupt it. What happened when the crowd appeared? Well, we actually skip that bit. Um, you may have noticed the reading was in two parts. We jump over that bit. Don't worry, we come back to it next week. Uh, although we switched to John's Gospel uh, to hear what happened. Um, and it involved uh, some loaves and some fish. Um, but it has that similar themes then of, of people needing something and of Jesus giving it to them, helping them find what they need. Captured in that, I think that lovely phrase, you know, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. I think you could put that little bit, sheep without a shepherd, uh, alongside Ezekiel and what Ezekiel has to say about shepherds and the leaders of Israel who were supposed to be shepherds to the people and he criticizes them. But then says this, God says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. And that's just what we see Jesus doing. He had compassion on them, saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. It's a lovely phrase. Perhaps it, it inevitably makes us think of the 23rd psalm that, that beautiful psalm you know where, where someone you know in this inspired moment what eight nine hundred years before jesus you know speaks of god as the one that that they look to that they trust and um, the one in whom you know they find comfort and rest um the one whom they know is always there at every point on life's journey you know, our landscape here is a continual reminder of that psalm. It's, it's such a beautiful picture. And um, we can imagine it, you know, in the fells around us. But the psalm is also a, a wonderful description of life's journey with its twists and its turns, its easy bits and its difficult bits. And it has this reassurance that God is always there. Unseen, yes, but always there at every point on the journey. And when we read the Gospels and look at the life of Jesus, we see him embodying that ancient psalm. Salvation, which is so central to our faith, um, is never defined in the Bible. But instead, there are uh, incidents, events and stories and songs to illustrate it. Uh, and you know, between them, it, it's sort of described, it's pictures of, of, of being in a place where life isn't good, where, where there isn't that rest, that recreation, that fulfilment, but being led from that place to somewhere that is good. If you like, of, of, of being lost, but then found by the one who looks at us with compassion and knows exactly what we need and leads us to that place. And it's there in today's passage, in the way Jesus looks upon the crowd and looks upon his disciples and where he wants to lead them. And our response 
to the shepherd who looks at us and knows that we're like sheep in need of someone is to trust in the shepherd. And, and certainly for me, that's one of the things I see in the Lord's Prayer, that response, that prayer of trust. And it's about the one that we look to, um, the one whom we ask for the resources that we need, our daily bread, because we know he will provide. And the things of the day, you know, um, for the ups and the downs and the twists and the turns and the interruptions that are going to come along. And the one whom we know will guide us. Lead us not into temptation, but guide us in the ways of his kingdom. Come with me, Jesus said. Let me help you find rest, recreation. May we know that today and in the days ahead. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores. Let us pray. Merciful God, you know the needs of this world and its suffering people, victims of natural disaster or man-made catastrophe, of war, political instability or local conflict, of crime, violence, exploitation or neglect. In the pain and despair, may your compassion be revealed, your love spread abroad, 
and your kingdom come. Merciful God, you know the needs of our local community, its schools, its doctors and places of care, its shops, its businesses and homes, its rejoicing and its despairing. In the joy and sorrow and the challenge of the daily round, may your good news shine out and may your kingdom come. Merciful God, you know the needs of our families and loved ones and those in our community and church family. In their distress or discomfort, grief or anxiety, may the presence of your Spirit the Comforter, draw close to them, bring healing and guidance, and may your kingdom come. Merciful God, you know each of us and hear our prayers even before we put them into words. Meet us at our point of need and walk with us this day and all the days ahead. Accept the prayer of our heart, Lord, and answer it in your love, that your will may be done and your kingdom come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, as we come to the end of our time together, I offer thanks to all who have contributed in any way, beforehand, behind the scenes and on screen, and to you at the other end of our virtual connection. We are one in the spirit. And as we go from here into the days ahead, may God, who began a good work in you, continue to be at work in your life, guiding, teaching and equipping you until Christ returns. May your love and compassion continue to grow, a love that is full of knowledge and wise insight, so that you will be able to recognise what really matters and become a little bit more like Jesus every day. And may you live a life centred in the Holy Spirit, a life that bears rich fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all the good things that come from following the Spirit. For living this way will bring much praise and glory to God and much comfort to those you find yourself alongside in the days ahead. And in all things, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those you love, care and pray for, near and far, now and always. Amen. And I will try in you
Your goodness will lead.